it's Stephanie here from Oh Your Lovely, where we carry the largest selection of wood flowers in the United States. And today, today is all about the bridesmaid. much for joining another tutorial and if you got this link that means that you got a bridesmaid bouquet kit and I'm going to show you exactly how to make this one from start to finish we'll also pop in a video quickly about how to dye the flowers if you choose to do so as well I'll also link up the bride bride bouquet as well as the boutonniere kit videos in the description as well in case you got one of everything could happen never know so let's jump in right now into this we'll break down what comes in the kit and then how to make this lovely bouquet when you open your kit you'll have a set of greenery that's a seeded eucalyptus corn broom to help finish off your handle some twine and then there will be 25 solo wood flowers now most of the styles are similar to the ones that come in the bride bouquet. However, the bride bouquet has a, um, one special flower that's only in that kit. Uh, the rest of the flowers are the same. Um, and then again, that number is 25 of those. So, so a, a smaller bouquet. To dye the flowers, what you're going to need is some room temp water. Optional is a little bit of vegetable glycerin and then your favorite craft or latex paint. This color we're going to use today is Crimson Red by Anita's. And it's like, I don't know how the camera's picking it up, but it's magenta like to me. It's pretty. So we're going to put that in there. I'm going to empty out the bottle basically. I'm going to slowly add in my water. It's usually about a one to one ratio of water to paint. And to keep the flowers soft, you can add just a little bit of glycerin. You do not need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. And I do just about one, one part glycerin to eight parts water. I'm gonna start mixing this up, but we'll, have, we'll add more water to this in just a second. One other thing you'll want is something to dry all your flowers on. I like to use egg cartons, but it's completely a personal preference. All right, moment of truth. So we're just gonna put our flower in there, bring it around, and scoop up some of the paint for some of those flowers that are a little bit deeper. And you can shape it while it's wet. When the wood is wet, it starts to become much more flexible and manual. Manualable? No, that's not the word. You, you know what I'm saying. But it does that. So I am noticing I do have some thicker paint spots, so I can add a little bit more water. So I'm gonna do that. But on those spots where it's kind of thick right now, I'm just gonna smooth it out with my finger. It's okay to get a little messy. There's one down. Let's do the others real quick. We'll add a little bit more water to this. Mix up a little bit more. Now throughout your dyeing, you do want to just mix up your water and paint every once in a while because the paint can start to settle so that you don't have any clumping or th uh, like spots and splotches and things like that. Okay. And we'll grab, this is an American Beauty. Roll it in there. I'm tilting this so that I can get my paint kind of in the flower quite a bit. And then I'm going to open up the petals again. Now, if you have some spots where you can kind of see that there still needs to be some um, saturation, you can also get like a spoon and scoop in some paint under there. And then what I do is I shake off all the excess and set it to dry. These do take about 24 hours to dry. 
um, to air dry and then you're good to go. To Let's talk real quick about how to prep the greenery for your bouquet. You're gonna get one full stem, I guess, or bunch. We'll call it a bunch. You get one whole bunch of the seeded eucalyptus. And what I like to do is just kind of spread it apart so I can see where all my individual wires go. And you're gonna clip all of those off individually. Once those are all clipped off individually, what you're going to do is you're gonna take the stems that are at the base of this and we're just going to slide everything up as far as you can go without breaking anything. And if anything pops off, which it does, every once in a while, it's okay. You just put it right back in. It's okay. If you want to add a little bit of glue, you can. I don't, but there it is. So you're going to do that with all of your greenery and then we're going to build some bundles. Stemming the flowers is super easy. You'll want to have some sort of hot glue. Um, you can also use E6000 if you want, but it does take longer for it to set. So hot glue is the best way to do it. I prefer a high temp glue. You can try low temp, um, but I've always just preferred to use a high temp hot glue. You can grab your flower, and what I like to do is with my stem, I'm going to first put a hole in there so that I know where it's going once I get my glue on my stem. So I'm gonna take my stem, and I'm gonna get some hot glue off my hot glue gun. Just a little bit, bring it on there, bring it back in, and you're done. So do that with all your flowers, and then, then we'll get to the making. I find that the easiest thing to do, especially if you haven't worked with flowers before, is to do what I have kind of called, well, I do call it, a bundle technique. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make small little bundles of flowers, and then we put them all together to make our bouquet. I also have a recipe for you. The one thing you are gonna want is some sort of tape to hold everything together. I like vinyl tape. I will have it linked in the description. You can also use electrical tape is the next best option in a pinch. That should work as well. You can also use like floral tape, but it tends to be a little bit hard to work with, especially if you're new to using it. Um, things like masking tape lose their stickiness over time and you don't want that, especially if you're making things ahead. So vinyl tape or electrical tape are gonna be the best options. Have a couple pieces of it strung up to the side and ready to go as you're doing this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you one of the bundles that we're gonna do and I'll give you the recipe for the rest. I'm gonna take two stems of my eucalyptus. I'm going to take a total of five flowers and I'm just going to spread them out throughout this little mini bundle. You don't, don't overthink this. It's Once you start getting to building and moving everything together, things just go together very well and you don't have to, you don't have to overthink it. So there's, I mean, that's all there is to it. it that's what we're gonna do. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this tape. I don't need nearly as much as I pulled off. And we're going to wrap near the bottom of the stems. Don't go way up on top because it's harder to hide all of that green or black or whatever color tape you have. So we're going to go down near the bottom and that'll get um, covered with our corn broom or ribbon or whatever you decide to use to finish off your bouquet. So we're gonna do that. So what you'll have for your bundles then is you're going to have a total of three of those double eucalyptus with five flowers. You'll then do two bundles that have one piece of eucalyptus and three flowers. And that will leave you with four individual flowers that you're gonna add in as we build this bouquet, wherever you have a low spot where there needs to be another flower put in place. It'll make sense once we start building this bouquet. All right, let's grab our bundles and get to making this bouquet. All right, are we ready to build this bouquet? Um, let's see, what are we gonna start with? I'll start with one of the bigger ones. Actually, this one's kind of more flatter. So let's, we'll start with this one. And all I'm gonna do is there's flowers there, but not a lot of greenery. So I'm gonna flip and I'll put my greenery there and my flowers there. Same with this one. Bring my flowers over there. This goes by so quickly, especially with these um, bridesmaid bouquets. It goes so much quicker. I'm almost wondering if I don't even need the last bundle, but I'll add it. Just a little bit, and this is where now it's nice to have those extra flowers 
because like for me right here, it's kind of a low spot. So I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna string some flowers in through there, build that up a little bit. And I want that kind of to sit on top of my other flowers. Also feeling like that doesn't round out as well as I'd like it to, so I'm gonna add that there. Another kind of low spot right here. I'm just gonna wiggle a flower in. I'm holding these pretty tight, but when I like fish in another flower, I loosen up a little bit, but not so much that I'm losing the shape. And my last flower we'll put right there, kind of nestled in that greenery. There's a bunch of greenery right there, so let's break that up a little bit, and we'll add a flower. All right, you have your vinyl tape handy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our vinyl tape and kind of go right around where a lot of those other taped off pieces are. It's low again so that you can cover this pretty easily. All right, so the bouquet is built. Now we're gonna finish it off. Now we'll take our corn broom and you can go either way. There's an unfinished, kind of more wild width um, piece and then there's more flat edges. I think for the bridal bouquet we want unfinished upwards. Let's do the, the opposite this time. So if you wanna see both, take a look. I'm just grabbing and then all of a sudden I'm like, um, no, that's not how we do this. So you want to just grab little bunches at a time, bring that corn broom up into your bouquet and start covering up your wires. my hand, hold the corn broom in place, and then twist and add another bunch. Somehow, you can't see it on my table, but I got corn broom everywhere. It slows down the process. <laughs> I'm like individually grabbing my pieces now. It's fine. Everything's fine. And then we'll trim off some of these are a little bit, it's gonna need a haircut. It's got kind of a lopsided edge kind of thing going on right now. So we'll give it a little haircut at the end. Almost there. Last couple little bunches. Now the corn broom that you'll get, you'll get a very generous amount. You'll have plenty to cover your entire handle. Uh, no problem whatsoever. Go with small bunches at first so you can see how much you're gonna need. You should have plenty to cover it to, to your liking. All right, I feel good about that. So I'm gonna grab again my vinyl tape that's sitting down and I'm gonna put it close to where my um, twine is gonna go because then we're gonna cover that with the twine and then you again won't be seeing that either. And pick a piece of vinyl that will fit across everything. Oh, good Lord. Hold on. All right, there's that. Now we're gonna add twine. I'm gonna go turn off the volume of my computer and we'll get this done. We're almost there. Can you feel it? We're almost done. So get your glue gun out again. Uh, have it nice and warm. Again, I'm gonna use high temp, or yeah, high temp, high temp glue. Um, might be able to get away with low temp on this one, but I've always just used high temp. So what we're gonna do is our bundle of twine. I'm going to start by throwing my twine around. Then I'm gonna start bringing my twine. I'll glue up a little bit onto the corn broom, a little bit higher than where I bundled it off with my vinyl tape. We're gonna go down, trying to keep um, it as tight and close to each other as possible, but knowing that we're gonna go back up and that's gonna cover up any of the gaps. Um, so we'll probably speed this part up quite a bit because it's a little boring, not gonna lie but we'll get it started. So I'm gonna bring the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing, and let's get to it. This is probably the trickiest part, so just be careful. But then once I wrap it around, I try to catch on to a few more pieces of that hot glue so that we have a real good base to start. When we get into the middle of the vinyl tape, I'll probably lay down just a little bit more glue 
so that we have a good foundation and it doesn't unravel somewhere near the middle. As we get back up to the top, I'm going to take that little tail from the beginning. We're going to kind of tuck that in so that we can scoot it around the rest. We'll get a scissors, we'll get this nice and handy dandy done. Then what we're going to do, I'm just going to add just a little bit more glue. Bring another tail on over. And then with my popsicle stick, I smooth out that hot glue so that we don't have like a big bubble there. And then what I'll do, I'll take that excess tail and just snip anything off that I don't want peeking through. All right. There we go. And there you go, a beautiful classic bridesmaid bouquet. Once you get the hang of this, it goes by super quick. We'll also make sure to share the recipe below in the description of the different bundles, how many pieces of filler to um, flowers that you need to create this style bouquet. If you're loving these videos, can't get enough, want to know when the next one goes live, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to find out about the 150 style wood flowers along with craft supplies, greeneries, and craft kits, go to ogierlovely.com. If you have any questions, make sure to pop them in the comments. We'll answer them as soon as possible. Give the video a like if you will, and we'll talk to you super soon. This is Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely, and you, my friends, are absolutely lovely. Bye, guys.